So the first thing we want to do is cut holes in the cooler. And so what I've done is uh, masked the sides and back of the cooler with uh, some masking tape. And what that'll allow us to do is uh, uh, mark the centers of each uh, side and we'll use a compass to draw a circle on there. Uh, and then uh, go ahead and cut the holes. And when we're cutting the holes, we'll be using a jigsaw and the tape will keep it in place because the um, bottom of the jigsaw can scrape the plastic. So we use the uh, tape to protect it while we're cutting it. And the uh, speakers have a template inside uh, that shows the exact dimensions of the circle we need to cut. So it's about seven and a half inches for the eight inch woofer and about uh, four plus inches on the uh, small coaxes. So we'll use those templates, get the right size, and then uh, mark circles over here with the compass and get our uh, circles drawn and the holes cut. So now we're outside, uh, so I can do some cutting on the uh, cooler. You can see I've marked the uh, sides and the top with uh, circles where I'm going to end up doing the cutting. And you can see that because it's shade. And anyway, the way I'm going to do this is first I'm going to drill a hole um, through the cooler close to the edge of this circle. Um, and that's, that hole is going to be big enough for that jigsaw blade to fit through. And then uh, I'll go ahead and cut the circles. Now we have our holes cut. Came out real nice. Clean those up uh, with a metal file if there's any rough edges, maybe a little bit of sandpaper just to smooth out the, the rough spots. And then there's the pieces that we cut out and we're ready to put in some speakers. We'll go ahead and leave the tape in place while we're doing all that measuring and drilling just so we don't uh, scratch it up. So uh, continuing to come along. So we're about ready to start assembling things, but before we do, I wanted to run over a few little pieces of hardware and little uh, tricks I've learned. So the subwoofer, it's pretty heavy, so we're gonna use these uh, number 10 by three quarter inch uh, sheet metal screws. They're gonna go right into the plastic. We'll use eight of those on the subwoofer. Uh, these little spacers are gonna be used to hold the circuit board up off the inside of the cooler. I'll show you that in a second. And then we'll use these number six by one inch uh, sheet metal screws to hold the circuit board in place. These are the screws that come with the small speakers. We're just going to use those right into the plastic without the little uh, metal clip on the back. It'll just go right into the plastic. And then these are the knobs that are going to end up going onto the circuit board. So let's take a look inside. The circuit board's going to end up up in this corner of the cooler. And what you want to avoid is uh, you want to leave some space. This is the top of the cooler. You want to leave some space between the top of the cooler when it's closed and those knobs so they don't uh, end up impacting one another. And then the battery is going to be down in this corner. It's just sitting there now, but we'll uh, use some Velcro to hold it in place. So there, there we are. And uh, next step, we'll start installing the uh, circuit board. One more thing before we start uh, mounting the circuit board, we want to prepare the speaker connections because uh, we want to install those in the back of the circuit board before we mount it inside the cooler. Once it's mounted inside the cooler, the speaker connections are on the bottom and so they're really hard to get to. So what I'm going to do, I've got some uh, 18 gauge two strand wire here. I'm going to cut about a foot, foot and a half uh, long piece for each one of the speakers and then later I can trim it. And I'll use a little flux and solder to uh, make these connections onto the sides of the speakers. I don't want to use clips because um, they can vibrate off over time. I want to do this once and have it last a long time. So I'm going to cut some uh, wire and then solder the, uh, the wire ends onto the speaker connections. One other step for the speaker wires is uh, what I've done is I've trimmed them to length and then uh, pulled the insulation off about the last half inch of the uh, wire. And then I've uh, used the soldering iron there to coat the stripped end with solder, and that'll keep all the strands together. Um, this is what it looks like before. Here's what it looks like after 
when you're using a soldering iron, you want to make sure you use a heat resistant uh, surface. You don't want to use something like a white terry cloth towel that could catch fire and burn your house down. Now we're ready to put in some speakers and mount them. So you can see I've got the speaker here with the wire soldered onto the back, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. And so what I'm going to do is just slip that wire in there, and I've marked uh, the holes where the screws will go. And I just pushed through that plastic with a little nail. You can use a little bitty drill, uh, whatever works for you. Plastic's pretty soft, um, but that's a little starter hole. So when we try to get the screws going in through, uh, through the speaker and through the grill that's going to go on top, um, it'll make it a lot easier than just trying to drive the screw through the plastic. So we'll uh, get those in place and take a look at it in a sec. And I just eyeballed these for straightness. Um, looks pretty good to me. Again, it's a cooler. It's not an art exhibit, so uh, I'm happy with it uh, being close to square on the side of the cooler. So we'll get those screwed in and give it another look. All right, we got the side speakers mounted. This is how it looks once it's uh, installed. And the other side, just the subwoofer hole. That's the other side mounted. The last thing I did uh, before I installed these two side speakers was pull out that masking tape. Um, take a look at the inside, see how they look where we cut through the entire side of the cooler. And we got enough wire there to reach the circuit board, which will end up going right here where these little pilot holes are marked in the front of the cooler. So next we're going to install the subwoofer, and that's got a few challenges I'll discuss here in a sec. All right, so the issue with the subwoofer is once I install it on the back of the cooler, I want to put this protective uh, grate over it. Um, and so that grate snaps onto this ring, and the subwoofer will fit inside that ring once I've got it mounted on the back of the cooler. But the challenge, as you can see, this ring has four holes, the speaker has eight. And so uh, another problem is the four that are in the ring, the steel ring, don't line up, I don't know if you can see it, but they don't line up with any of the holes in the speaker. So what I'm going to do is use the best five bucks you ever spent at Harbor Freight. I'm going to use the speaker and this automatic center punch to put, uh, to mark eight new holes. I'm not even going to use the four old ones. Uh, eight new holes. I'll mark those out so they align with the eight holes in the speaker, and then we'll drill those and uh, and be able to mount the speaker and this ring using uh, the same eight screws. And uh, then once this ring is installed, the way it works is this cover snaps onto this outer radius that you can see here. So I'll just show you that quick. The ring will be mounted onto the cooler like this, as if this was the cooler. So that edge is sitting up, and then this is going to slide onto the top and just push into place. So uh, we'll get that all screwed together and uh, mounted on the back of the cooler. So I got the eight holes drilled in that retainer ring, or the uh, ring that the uh, speaker screen is going to snap onto. I went ahead and got all my uh, screws installed. It's looking really good. I'm liking how, how it's going here. And that's nice and tight against the side of the cooler. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just slap this on quick, see how it looks. Slips on nice and easy. It's starting to get heavy now that it's got a bunch of speakers in it. Looking pretty good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to install the circuit board in here. So let's talk about that for a minute. So the circuit board, as you can see, now these are the connections that we're going to use across the back. And on the left, there's a DC in. So you can hardwire this to a battery if you want to. Um, 
Next over, we've got the right speaker out, left speaker out, and then subwoofer connection. So we'll be using those uh, to connect those speaker wires that we soldered on earlier. We'll use those screws to tighten them down. This uh, input here is what we're gonna, what I'm gonna use for the battery uh, input. Um, this circuit board can take between 12 and 24 volts. I'm using a 12 volt battery. This over here is, I think it's a three and a half millimeter jack, and that's used uh, if you wanna uh, use uh, an iPod or something hardwired in. Um, you can use that uh, as an alternative to Bluetooth. And the way you switch between Bluetooth and that input is that little switch. Um, when you first turn it on, it defaults to Bluetooth, uh, and you can push that uh, button to make it switch to this input. So that's a high-level overview of the circuit board. So as I said earlier, we've left the speaker wires disconnected. Um, but we've got those mounted now, and uh, from what I can tell, haven't done these before, no big difference between left and right. There's not a balance uh, knob on this uh, circuit board, so even though the connections are marked left and right, uh, really doesn't make much difference. We'll still follow those, but it uh, doesn't seem to be a big thing. So we're going to use these uh, longer uh, wood screws through the mounting holes that you can see uh, on the circuit board. Uh, we'll use these spacers. That's gonna hold the circuit board up just about a half an inch uh, off the surface in there. So that'll allow it to stay cool um, and look a little nicer. And then uh, these knobs are gonna be snapped on to the spline shafts here uh, once we've got it in place. All right, now we're ready to mount the battery inside the cooler. And what I'm gonna use is Velcro. Uh, to do this. It seems like the best way, uh, with the ones I've done, best way to mount these batteries because they're pretty heavy. So what I'm going to do is put the fuzzy side of the Velcro on the battery and the, the hook side will be stuck on the inside of the cooler. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick these on to the battery first and leave that paper on. And then when I've got these uh, lined up how I want them, I'm going to peel this paper off and then stick it inside the cooler where I want it. And that way the hook side of the Velcro will be right in position um, where I want the battery to sit when it's inside. So we'll get that done and uh, get it mounted inside and give it a look. One other thing I wanted to point out was the use of these spacers. So you can see how uh, they raised the circuit board about a half an inch off the inside of the cooler. And there's some uh, various soldering connections that come through the bottom of the circuit board, so that helps uh, produce that interference there as well. All right, now we have the battery mounted right where we want it. It's uh, good and secure. Got the Velcro, it's not going anywhere. And uh, we're also going to take care of these wires a little bit um, just to tidy it up. This little thing, I'll list these in the parts that you need, uh, is a good little um, way to organize and keep the wires straight. It's got a little adhesive on the back, put the wires through, just snap that through there, holds it all. So uh, we'll put the finishing touches on it, get the battery cable hooked up, and give this baby a test flight. So we're hooked up, uh, got the Mac hooked up to the circuit board through the Bluetooth connection, and uh, I'm going to play a little song here. I want to give special thanks to Daniel Tidwell, who gave me permission to use some of his music. Uh, Check them out on Spotify, and uh, I'll also put a link in the uh, comments or description um, for his YouTube page. Uh, does a lot of really good stuff, so uh, special thanks again to him. And uh, let's hear what this thing sounds like.
send any questions you uh, like to and I'll try and answer them and uh, best of luck with your project.